Hey guys, I'm in the process of building a barbed wire fence around my storage buildings here to keep the cows out. What I plan on doing for this video is showing you how I made this um, corner post or how I put in this corner post. These posts right here, the wood comes from a bodark tree. This little crossbar right here is a cedar. Bodarks are very resistant to rotting. This post right in the corner, I put pretty deep down in the ground. I should have made a video of it, but I've got 60 pounds of concrete down in the ground with it to hold it. One thing about Bodark wood is it's a real heavy, dense wood. You can't hardly drive a nail or a staple into it. You can see that nail right there as I was driving, or that staple right there. As I was driving it in with my hammer, it just got to a certain point and it was just bending the staple. So what I did on these posts is like right here, I cut a groove in it with the chainsaw. So that wire right there will just sit in that groove. Here's the little notch I cut in the other side. So I started down here at the bottom of the corner, the one in the very corner. I wrapped the barbed wire around and then I twisted it. I've got a nail right here just to keep it from sliding up the post. And then I wrapped the barbed wire around. I came up to here and then I hooked it on this notch. This notch will keep it from sliding down the post like this. Then you take the other side of the barbed wire down here and then you just wrap it around and then I just twist it on up and that holds it. So then you end up having two layers of barbed wire going up to this post right here. From this post right here, I have a crossbar. I cut that out of cedar. Cedar is pretty resistant to rotting, um, but the red core is what resists rotting. This has a lot of white wood on the outside, so I didn't really want to set this post in the ground, so I just cut it up as a crossbar. So I've got the cedar post coming from this one on the edge, and it goes all the way over to the corner, the bigger corner post, and I did the same thing on that side. The way that works is you've got the wire going down to the ground, then it goes up around the edge and then goes back down. And then you stick a stick like this in between the wires and you just start twisting. See, there's nothing really holding that. And as you twist that wire, it's pulling the top of that post over against that cedar bar. And that bar is transferring, I guess, the force up against that one. So you can see down through there where I've put the T-post in a row. I use a piece of trot line just to keep them straight, but with those, with that crossbar and then that wire going down, those two together tend to push on each other. So you've got two poles holding. That way when you go and stretch your wire, you've got a, a more solid, um, some more solid posts, posts to pull against. If I wasn't working with bodark wood that was just so hard, I would also run a wire from the bottom of the outside post up to the one in the middle and it would make an X and it would just pull them together and make it a little bit stronger and more solid. But I feel like with that post being deep in the ground and having concrete down there, then it's, that it's gonna get the job done. You can also see right here, I took my chainsaw and I notched the wood out. Then I notched out that cedar crossbar where they would just fit against each other. And then just the force from the wire being twisted together holds the cedar crossbar in place. Now let me show you the, the hammer that I like to use to drive the staples in. The staple right here is round on the end. I like to use this hammer. It's a little bit heavier, and a little bit longer, and you can see it's got the ridges on the head. I feel like those ridges keep the head of the hammer from slipping off as much when you try to drive it in. Um, also, 
the head on this hammer is a little bit bigger than just a standard size hammer. Um, that just makes it, like I say, you're hitting a round object. Keeps it from slipping off as bad and keeps you from smashing your finger as bad. A six inch treated post that you'd buy at Tractor Supply would cost you, I believe, about $16 and some change a piece. So I've got three of them right here. I've got a bunch of Bodark trees on my property. So I just saved some money and used the Bodark. Now I'm going to go out in the woods and show you a couple of Bodark trees. This right here is a Bodark tree. Another name for this tree is an Osage Orange. I think there's some other things that people call them. Usually they're pretty crooked trees, so your posts generally aren't straight. Some trees are straighter than others. There's the stump of one of the trees I cut down. You can see when you cut into that wood, it almost has a green tint to it. A lot of y'all have probably seen one of these right here. This comes off a of Bodark tree. I think that's why it gets its name Osage Orange, but I know when I was a kid, there was a road I walked down to go to the bus stop and these were all over the ground. And like I say, this is what comes off a of Bodark tree. Give you a good look of the leaves of a Bodark tree. Here's a piece of that cedar I cut down for the crossbar. Like I say, if you were using this for a post down in the ground, you'd want that red in the middle to be bigger because when that post goes to rot, this whiter wood around the edges is gonna be what rots first. That red part will last for years down in the ground. Well, that's gonna conclude my video for today. If you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.